Hello, in this video we're going to have an introduction to structural member properties. What are structural member properties? Well, for one, the main thing we're going to focus on in this lesson is moment of inertia, represented with the capital letter I. It's a mathematical property of a cross-section, so it's measured in uh, inches to the fourth power, that gives important information about how that area is distributed about a, central, a centroidal axis. Really what it is, is it's the stiffness of an object related to its shape. So as we can see here, this diving board is not very stiff. We want to have bounce and jump off. And this board, this platform for swimming, is very rigid and more stiff. And so these will have different moments of inertia. In general, a higher moment of inertia produces a greater resistance to deformation. So the higher the moment of inertia, the more likely it is to resist being deformed. So if you look at these two examples, which one is more likely to resist being moved or bent or um, uh, deformed? And it's actually, this is a springboard, so this will spring back and forth, and this one won't. So this one is more likely to reduce being deformed, so it will have a higher moment of inertia. What's important in a moment of inertia? Here's two examples of how we have the same plank, same, same, uh, this is a plank, flat, of same board, it's a one by six, and then this one is a one by six, but we've put it up on its side as in a joist. The moment of inertia for beam A, which is here, is um, calculated using this information here. The moment of inertia for beam B is calculated using this information here. So we're interested in the length, the width, the height, and the area, the cross-sectional area here, depending on the um, orientation. So what distinguishes, what's the difference between A and B? It's the orientation. The boards are exactly the same size, only one is turned up on its side and one is laying flat. What do you think? Will beam A or beam B have a greater resistance to bending resulting in the least amount of deformation, which is going to make us have a higher moment of inertia. Is A going to resist deformation more than B, or vice versa? And that's considering that we apply the same load to both beams at the exact same time. Okay, so because of the orientation, the joist has, this joist has a greater moment of inertia. This joist is nine times as stiff as the plank in this example. Why did beam B have a greater deformation than beam A? Why is that? Well, the difference is the moment of inertia due to the orientation of the beam. If you'll notice, the cross-section on the joist is given here, and we have this much base and this much height. When I look at the moment of inertia for the other beam, then you would have more base and less height if it was turned the other way. So we're going to calculate the moment of inertia just for rectangles. Really, you want to calculate the moment of inertia based on your cross-section, and we can do all kinds of complex shapes, as we saw in centroids, where you had a C-beam, or an I-beam, or a J-beam, not J, L-beam. <laughs> and um, those we can calculate the moment of inertia for those, but it's quite complicated. So we're just wanting to do an introduction here. So we're going to stick with rectangles. Here is the formula. Looks crazy. So we'll call it the moment of inertia. You do the base to the first power, the heights to the third power, and then you divide by 12. So if we want to calculate um, the moment of inertia for beam A, my base is one and a half inches, because this is a two by four. So they're not really two inches wide because of the um, the 
width of the blade when you cut it it takes a little bit off of each side so it's really one and a half by five and a half so I'm gonna do one and a half times five and a half to the third and then divide by twelve so I have inches times inches cubed that's how we come up with our unit of inches to the fourth and when I divide that I get approximately 21 inches to the fourth as my moment of inertia now what happens when we do beam B and we lay the beam flat so now my base is five and a half and my height is one and a half so I do five and a half once and one and a half cubed that makes me have five and a half times three point three seven five cubed so inches times inches cubed it's gonna make inches to the fourth and then when we divide we get our moment of inertia which is one point five okay so remember the higher the number for moment of inertia the more it resists deformation so the other one had a moment of inertia of 21 inches to the fourth so that makes it more likely about uh, almost 21 more times or at least 11 times more resistant to deformation than the origin than orientation for B so this beam has a moment of inertia of 21 inches to the fourth this beam has a moment of inertia of 1.5 so since it's lower it's more likely deformed so this is 14 times stiffer I just divide 21 by 1.5 and that's how I figure that out so here's some composite shapes as we talked about an L shape, a C shape, an I shape um, so why are these shapes used in structural design as opposed to just any shape out there and it's because of that moment of inertia that's what we're going for is trying to not have that's why your load bearing walls are really important in your structures they have to use a certain joist to be a load bearing wall because that means it is more resistant has a higher moment of inertia and is more resistant to deformation so it can support that load okay here is non-composite versus composite beams all that composite really means is that it's made up of several rectangles this is just one rectangle okay um, calculating the moment of inertia for a composite shape such as an I-beam as seen here is beyond the scope of this presentation in this class but the value is given for uh, the purpose of comparison both of these shapes are two inches wide by four inches tall and both beams are comprised of the same material the I-beam's flanges and web are uh, 0.38 inches thick and so the moment of inertia for the rectangular beam is 10.67 and its area is 8 inches squared the moment of inertia for the I-beam is 6.08 and its area is 2.75 but the I-beam may be 43% less stiff than the rectangular beam but it uses 66% less material so that's why you would have advantage to using this I-beam over the rectangular beam increasing the height of the I-beam by about one inch will make the moment of inertia for both of the shapes equal but the I-beam will still use less material so this is why we would choose to use composite beams over rectangular so we're doing more with less another part that's important in considering in structural member properties is the chemical makeup of the materials that you have made your object from one of them is called the modulus of elasticity the ratio of the increment of some specified form of stress to the increment of some specified form of strain is the modulus of elasticity this defines the stiffness of an object related to the material chemical properties and if we get to it we will do a um, lesson on stress versus strain graphs and we'll actually take some metal and we will break it and we will learn the difference what's what exactly this modulus of elasticity does but right now it's just a number that defines the stiffness of the material in relation to the chemical properties 
a higher modulus of elasticity produces a greater resistance to deformation. Again, the higher the number, the greater, the more likely we are to resist deformation. So modulus of elasticity, let's look at this. We have um, beam A here and beam B. So now the same orientation. We're just going to have beam A is made from Douglas fir and beam B is made from ABS plastic. So what distinguishes them from each other? It's not their orientation this time. It is what they're made of. So will beam A or beam B have a greater resistance to bending? Do you think Douglas fir or ABS plastic will reduce bending, will resist bending more? My guess is A. Okay, so let's check this out. Why did B have a greater deformation than A? The difference is in the material's modulus of elasticity. It's the ability of a material to deform and return back to its original shape. Characteristics of objects that affect deflection, and deflection is really the change, this triangle right here means change, in position. So the difference uh, is um, how much this will move and come back to its original position. Again, we're going to apply a force or a load on each one and so the amount of force or load that you put on it matters and then also the length of the span between the supports. Do we support it here and here or do we support it at the end so how long this beam is makes a difference. And then of course modulus of elasticity and moment of inertia play a role. So if we want to calculate how much this beam is going to deflect when I stand on top of it, how much it's going to move down, bend down when I stand on top of it, then um, this is the formula that we're going to use. This means beam deflection, how much it's going to change, is equal to the force that we put to it, the length of the beam or the length in between the supports because I could support it closer to the middle if I like, and then 48 times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia. So let's calculate beam deflection for the Douglas fir. So the amount of force that I'm going to apply is 250 pounds of force. <coughs> if it's 8 feet in length, then I'm going to use 96 inches. And the reason I'm choosing to use inches for my length is because I've got this moment of inertia that I have told you is measured in inches to the fourth. So I need this up here to be also be in inches. And then, oh, and also our Modulus of elasticity is 1,800,000 PSI. PSI stands for pounds per square inch. So I will put in 48. My modulus of elasticity is here. And then the moment of inertia that I've already calculated. So the most that this beam will deflect is 12 hundredths of an inch. Now let's calculate it for the ABS plastic same formula. I am applying the same load, 250 pounds. It is an 8 foot beam, so I still have 96 inches. Um, my modulus of elasticity is different now. It is uh, 419,000 psi, pounds per square inch. And then I um, am going to put in my modulus of elastic, or moment of inertia. And now this beam, when I stand on it, it deflects almost half an inch. So that's now we can tell the difference between the plastic beam and the Douglas fir beam. So the m amount of deflection for A is only 12 hundredths of an inch. The amount of deflection for B is 53 hundredths of an inch. And so because of the plastic and the thing that was changed was our modulus of elasticity, because of the elastic property of plastic, it's going to deform more than the Douglas fir. So we have less deflection here, about a little more than four times less deflection on the wood than on the plastic. 
So that is beam deflection and also moment of inertia. And so now we want you to practice these formulas by completing the beam deflection activity as a group and working on find calculating moments of inertia um, on the worksheet.